Hello, my name's Laurie Watson and I'm a musician and researcher. Um, I grew up in Berwickshire, so I went to school in Coldstream and then in Duns. And um, I became interested in traditional music in particular, but local culture more generally. And uh, I went on to study Scottish music at the Conservatoire in Glasgow, the Royal Conservatoire of Scotland. Um, where I studied and then taught for several years. And now I'm based at uh, Celtic and Scottish Studies and the School of Scottish Studies Archive uh, at Edinburgh University. And uh, my focus there is really on the traditional arts, um, performance, creativity, uh, archive materials, local culture, traditional arts examples and uh, folklore history um, but working creatively with those materials um, really looking at the way that people express themselves and have expressed themselves in Scotland through time. Um, next uh, September 2021 we'll have our first Masters in Traditional Arts Performance beginning at Edinburgh University and we're really looking forward to, to developing more performance work in the department. So in terms of the, the archives, the School of Scottish Studies archives are based at um, 29 George Square in Edinburgh, which of course you can't reach right now. Um, but uh, there are some digital resources I want to let you know about uh, just before I share a couple of musical examples with you. Um, in terms of the archive materials we have there, it's, uh, we have an in incredible treasure trove of um different examples of traditional arts, um, as well as uh, a real insight into people's way of life, their modes of work, the folklore, stories, superstitions that existed and exist in communities throughout Scotland and further afield, actually. Um, there are different sections to the archive. In the audio archive, I think there's there's over something like 33,000 different recordings. Um, so... There's a lot of material there to experience and to listen to, engage with. You may well find the voices of some of your ancestors in there, um, but also to work with creatively to be inspired by. So um, a good portion of the material from the archive or from the audio archive um, has been digitised and along with a couple of other collections is available online if you want to explore what's there. Um, the website to go to is Kisto Riches, which is K-I-S-T-O Riches uh, .co .uk, and you can have a good search through the material there. Now in terms of... Um, documents, cultural documents from the area that this project looks at and I was delighted to hear about this project exploring um, obviously the, the archaeology of the Wittadar Valley but also um, the activities of the community and local culture and um, we could we could do with knowing more about the local culture, both historically and and currently. So, I suppose this is a kind of um, an open call <laughs> um, to to anyone who know who knows someone from the area who might know stories or songs or superstitions or local customs or indeed who is is making stories music songs today that's inspired by the local area and I know some interesting work is coming out through this project um, and it would be lovely to to find some of this in our archive in the future. Um, another couple of websites for you are the Celtscot, celtscot.ed.ac.uk which is Celtic and Scottish Studies at Edinburgh so you can get in touch with me through there. There's a blog as well and you can also find me at Laurie Watson, L-O-R-I Watson.net and two musical examples from me today. Um, the, the first is going to be a song which is um, Polwart on the Green or Polwart on the Green um, and then followed by a pipe tune which is Dunstings Awe. Um, Dunstings Awe you might hear a few times over, over the celebrations, it's a very popular tune um, but both of these items are hundreds of years old and still in circulation so um, they're real uh, local treasures if you like. 
So Dun's Things All is a, a tune from from the days of the Town Pipers in Scotland. Um, the Town Pipers are a European tradition, so found in various countries and towns, boroughs throughout Europe. Um, also an important tradition in Scotland. Um, I think we're talking from the very late 1400s till the early 1800s, uh, up to the 1830s, we have records of Town Pipers in Scotland. And uh, several towns in the borders, we have records of, of town pipers here as well. Um, the pipers would, well, they had all kinds of different jobs to do. And a small salary and usually a, an outfit, a costume or a uniform would go with the job. Um, and they quite often would play twice a day in the streets. So waking folk up or calling the end of the day. Um but they also played at important events, civic occasions and celebrations. Um, and kind of a, as a byproduct or a, as a result of, of this tradition, we have these tunes that are dedicated to specific boroughs or townships. Um, so tunes like the Brawl Lads of Jeddart, so Jedborough, uh, Tiribus in for Hoik, um, Suitors of Selkirk, Selkirk of course, and um, another example is Dunn's Things All, which of course is the motto of Dunn's, which is um, one of the important townships on the Whittider, on the route of the Whittider. So, um, I think just in terms of historically, the one of the earliest collections to to publish that, that tune or that melody um, was a collection of reels. It was published in 1761 in Edinburgh. Um, but of course the tune must have existed before that to have been collected um, but it also exists in Gow's uh, collection of reels from 1792 I think uh, but first a song so this song is uh, Paul Wart on the Green and it can be found in Alan Ramsey's uh, Tea Table Miscellany which was published in 1740 but Ramsey actually used um, at least the melody and perhaps some text um, in his 1725 ballad opera, The, the Gentle Shepherd. Um, you can actually find a, a digitised version of Ramsey's Tea Table Miscellany, which is a collection of songs and poems. Um, and you can see that online. It's been digitised by the National Library of Scotland. And we'll try and put up a link for that for anyone that's interested. Um, you also find that the, the melody was used by composer James Oswald, um, used the tune in his Sonata of, of Scots tunes, um, which he published in 1739. And then we find different versions in other collections, including there's a, a really nice tune and variation set, which is like the main melody, but then composed variations on it provided so it's almost like a an extended piece of music developed from the melody um so david young published that in his mcfarlane collection which again was around 1740 um there's a little bit of disagreement about the the origins of the song uh, Robert Burns attributed the the song to uh, Captain John Drummond, Drummond McGregor, but all all other sources, including Walter Scott, seem to think or seem to agree that Burns was mistaken um, in this in this instance, which I think is quite quite rare for Robert Burns to make a mistake like that. Um, the the first and last sections of the song are thought to be traditional or older, um, and the middle section was composed by Ramsey. Um, this was a really common practice in in traditional folk music in Scotland and and songs, um, song editing and collecting, um, where the the old text, the traditional text or traditional melody, is reworked and developed and added to. And in fact, you know, a significant portion of Robert Burns's work is exactly that. So, just a couple of words about the song itself. Um, it's a song about courtship. Um, the love song about about being open to love without uh, pretense um, is joyful and fun. Um, it mentions kind of the social context, dancing and and music, um, and I think I think it's quite a cute song actually, and 
it's um, of course built around the idea of a, a marriage custom from the village of Polwart, um, where it's thought that new brides and their partners would dance or girls would gather and dance around these thorn trees in the green. Of course, Polwart's quite small, there's, there's not a lot there now, um, but it's thought that this dates back to a particular uh, family historic event, um, I think in the 1300s, so it's quite an early event. Um, there are versions, lots of different versions. The, the version that I'm going to sing for you is, is um, based on the Ramsey text from, from his collection. Um, but you'll also find versions recorded by um, Jean Redpath and Michaelius, who were or are um, Corrine Polwart and uh, Jill Bowman. Um, and you'll also find really beautiful uh, Baroque arrangements um, of the melody, so they're worth worth a listen as well. Um, just a very brief explanation of the lyrics. Uh, the lyrics are um, in English and in Scots, so a mixture. <clears throat> um, and I I tend to sing uh, with a with some Scots words and a, a Scots accent, of course. Um, so the the first verse is really saying, you know, on the green at at Polwart, um, if you meet me in the morning. <clears throat> where the girls meet to dance around these the, the thorns, thorn trees. Um, you'll get a warm welcome from um, the person, the girl, which is me, the, the singer, um, that likes to see a boy and a lover, which is you, the listener. And uh, verse two is, let haughty or um, arrogantly superior women uh, say no as long as they want uh, to seem colder than the snow um, but while on the inside they blaze potentially with passion so they're pretending that they're unaffected by love but they are um, I will honestly show my my own mind and I'll give my heart to you um, and I'll be uh, ever of the captive kind um, that doesn't long to be free and then verse 3 um, comes back to to the green at Polwart, and uh, it says and after harvesting the hay, <clears throat> uh, we'll celebrate with singing and dancing all day, and then at night, if the beds are all occupied and busy, and you're separated from yours, then uh, you'll be welcome to take a part of mine. So it's it's sweet and a bit naughty. So um, here's Polwart on the green. <laughs>
So this is a, a tune called Dun Stings Aw and it's one of the older tunes in the borders, an old pipe tune in the song and it's a civic tune, it's a tune that belongs to the, the town of Duns in particular. Um, it's in the the right scale for the, the pipes, the border pipes. So we've got a flat and G at the top, or a G natural. But um, you get versions of this tune played on other instruments with the G sharp. But I'll do the, the pipe one today. <laughs> 